Hey, good morning everyone. Trackman44 here. You know, after well over 40 years in the uh, HVAC industry, uh, the majority of which was in uh, commercial commercial service work, I find myself in a situation where I have to do something I've never, never had to do before. You know, we have so many shortages this day and time on materials and equipment across the board in virtually everything. Uh, but we have a situation that's compounded in my particular brand of air conditioning uh, uh, scenario and that's that's the fact that because they're in the process of retooling and changing their manufacturing processes that's required to convert to another new refrigerant that uh, that we have yet to be informed as to, to what uh, what it's going to be they have slowed down production or have limited production of their existing model units so I've got my system at my son's house fully installed uh, with the ductwork, the uh, furnace, and the A-coil, but I'm just waiting on the condenser, the outdoor unit. Okay, so <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of a, of a hot streak right now. I think we're in the second of the string of multiple 100 degree days, 100 degree Fahrenheit days. And so what I find myself doing, because it is just beginning to get a little unsufferable upstairs, even though they have a second unit up in the second uh, second floor, they can't live up there all the time, you know. So uh, that portion is comfortable, but the downstairs is uh, suffering. But I find myself in a situation where I have to take the old existing system that I disconnected electrically and slipped off to the side, leaving the refrigerant and everything intact. I'm in a situation where I'm going to take that existing system and place it in such a manner to where I can take some temporary piping and pipe off of the discharge of that existing air handler, powering the air handler off of the new furnace's power supply because all we need is the blower in the old air handler, and then pipe a couple of pipes off of that discharge up and into the return air of the new system. So by blowing the cold discharge air off of the old system into the return air, we should be able to, with the blower running on the new furnace right here, we should be able to suck that cold air down in through the A-coil and distribute it through the house. Inefficient, yes. Functional, halfway decently, um, but only temporarily. So like I said, I'm finding myself in a situation I've never been in in 40-some uh, odd years. It was kind of aggravating to have to bend this and get this over here. We are because the new unit is a R410 and this existing unit is an R410. We'll utilize the same refrigerant lines, which is why I wanted to make sure that we didn't do any kinking. So it's going to have to be kind of all misshapen uh, like it is until we get the new system in place. Then we'll correct all that. But I got the furnace over here in line with the return air. I'm going to power the blower in this off of the power supply and furnace with number 10. That's all it's going to have is just nothing but uh, but a blower, and I'll be able to use three six-inch takeoffs, and I'm going to make a cap for this right here, and put three six-inch takeoffs that will come right straight up and blow right into the end of the existing the existing return on the new system, and it should draw that air through with the blower running, and get a reasonable distribution throughout uh, the downstairs portion of the house. I zipped back through the shop real quick. And I made a little cap that will just set right on top of the existing furnace flanges. And I made a new return air cap that will align with these three holes here. It will go on. I'll take off the return air cap off of that ductwork. And I'll set up three six-inch fittings to where they'll just come right straight up out of here and right straight into the return air duct. Like I said before, will that be inefficient? Tremendously so. But... You know what, during this um, onslaught of this hot weather we're having right now, uh, it's it's going to be okay. Because there, there is no air conditioning available, you know what I mean? So we'll uh, we'll go ahead and tie this in, and then we'll uh, go ahead and fire everything up, have to do a little bit of wiring, and we'll fire everything up and see how she works. You can see the three holes on top of the uh, three holes on top of the uh, plenum cap or furnace cap, and the three up there in a line. Okay, now guys, pay no attention to all this garbage here. This is entirely temporary, just like I've stressed in the past. Uh, what we got is three six-inch supply runs going into the return air trunk, uh, and we're going to go ahead and start up the blower right now. 
and see how noisy it is and see if it's going to do what it is we want it to do. As soon as we get the, the regular central air conditioner, we'll be able to disconnect all this stuff and put it back to normal. So what I'm doing right now on the old existing furnace, the one that has the air conditioning coiled in, we're going to be connecting up. I've got nothing connected to it, so I'm going to pull out the thermostat wires here that will go to the uh, thermostat for power and also come back from the thermostat to energize the cooling or the uh, fan relay. We've got the power powered temporarily here out of the other furnace so I can turn this power supply on. Turn this power supply on. When I connect these two wires here, it should be like turning the thermostat blower control to the on position. So I connect these wires. Now these new systems have a delay on and a delay off on the blower. There's your delay on time period is over. So the blower is running right now. So it's blowing through those three six inch pipe and pressurizing and return air down. And like I say, I've just got a number, number 10 or a 12, I can't remember which, powering this because we're doing nothing but maybe a, you know, a two amp, two and a half amp uh, indoor blower motor. Not a big deal at all. This is a new furnace, the new duct that work that goes to, to serve the house with the, uh, our damper controls that are going to be automatic when we get done, as well as the shut off or the dampers up there that are going to shut off the uh, wood furnace when you're in the air conditioning mode or in the electric heat mode. These will reverse position for the different modes. Here's our thermostat connections coming back down. What we'll do is we'll pick up this wire here, which is the wire from the new thermostat that actually energizes the air conditioner outside. We're going to energize the cooling contactor and then bring it back to transformer common here. Totally controlling both of the systems out of this one 40 VA transformer because we don't have to worry about the blower relay because we've got it wired to where it's going to run continuously during a duration. We're hoping this is only going to be a week or so. Now to recap what it is we're doing, we have the new system right here whose thermostat is going to control the blower in automatic mode off of the existing thermostat to the new system and the new system is temporarily providing power to the old air handler which is still connected to the old condenser sitting outside. So the old air handler. I've got wired for the blower to run continuously and there's a reason for that. If you know about air conditioning, you know that air conditioning operates at a rate of 400 cubic feet of air per minute per ton of air conditioning. And having this thing attached like I have with just three six inch runs off at the top and a wide open return, we're going to be unlimited on return but restricted on supply. So restricted on the supply means we're not going to deliver the determined 400 cubic feet of air per minute per ton because of that restriction. So it's gonna, the fan's gonna run a little bit faster because of less and load. It's gonna be a little more noisy, but what could happen because of that lessened airflow is it could initiate a freeze on that indoor coil. So with the blower motor running continuously, hopefully by the time we get a freeze condition, the new system over here, whose thermostat is controlling the air conditioner, the new system over here should satisfy before the potential uh, exists for freezing up the coil and in doing so the thermostat will shut off the air conditioner which will then allow the continual blowing air handler to defrost the coil and minimize the potential for a severe and solid freeze up. That's what the theory is, that's what the concept is behind it and do I recommend you do it at home? No, not at all. Uh, but you know being an old air conditioner guy this kind of stuff we do whenever we got to do something to get by to a bad spell in uh, hot weather or cold weather. You'd be surprised at things you can come up with uh, to stay warm and also to stay cool, you know. Okay guys, so that brings the uh, the Franken Furnace episode uh, of Tractor Man 44 to an end. I think we're being reasonably successful. We got cold air going upstairs and we got a tremendous amount of uh, humidity being drawn out the drain of the old existing furnace. So I think things are looking up. One of the house is really warm up there right now. It's about 86 degrees, uh, maybe even a little bit warmer than that. So it's going to take a number of air changes in order for that temperature to start dropping. But the fact that we're drawing out so much humidity or so much moisture means it's going to be a little, uh, the level of comfort is going to, to uh, increase dramatically in no time. To make sure we get all the, uh, the water down the drain, I just temporarily put a, uh, a loop in some clear PVC hose to get a makeshift P-trap so that the suction from the blower or the negative pressure created by the blower doesn't cause the drain pan in the old system to overflow and just get all over the floor. But if you look real closely, you can see a steady stream of water going down into the top lock of the P-trap. And then you can see it, of course, going out 
in the same rate at which it's coming in and going down the drain. Now that we got this thing satisfactorily cooling, within just a few days I'm expecting to get a phone call from my buddy at the supply house. I uh, should be having my new system in. When that uh, comes in, we're going to pump this system down, recover the refrigerant, use the existing line set to go to the new coil that's installed into the new furnace, and go ahead and set the new condenser outside. As a matter of fact, we're actually welding up a, a bracket uh, to actually get this one elevated up high so all the grass clippings and stuff stay out of it and there would be no uh, potential for damage to the coils with a lot more wheels, things of that nature, you know. So that having been said, I think we have put this one to rest for a while. And this is Trackman 44 and I'm out of your ass.